saya Manohara dan saya sekarang lagi ada di AFJ Animal Friends Jogja. Uh, I heard a lot about this place um, and I was nearby not too long ago, so I thought it was a must to stop by untuk lihat kind the piglet, the very famous kind, uh, see the other dogs and cats, eat the delicious vegan food, and hang out with the really cool people here. So I'm glad I came. adopsi cukup banyak ya karena di rumah anjing ada 10 dan kucing udah nggak tahu berapa udah banyak sekali um, so the first dog I adopted namanya Molly uh, dia di adopt dari salah satu shelter di Jakarta um, she was very frightened of people especially men uh, jadi maybe in her past aku nggak tahu latar belakangnya apa dan shelter pun nggak tahu tapi dia memang sangat nervous awal-awalnya sangat agresif sama makanan um, but yeah I've had her for five years now she's much better dia udah berteman sama anjing-anjing yang lain udah nggak se nervous dulu sama strangers juga udah oke okay. um, and udah nggak agresif juga sama makanan itu salah satu yang terpenting uh, and my most recent adoptee namanya Jago I found her at a shelter di Ragunan She was in really, really bad shape. Very bad shape. She was bleeding from everywhere. She was full of ticks, uh, highly anemic. And even the doctor said chances of her surviving are really slim. Um, and I've had her for, uh, I'd say, around five or six months now. She's much, much better. She's healthy now, by the way. So uh, health-wise, she's perfect. But she's still very, very nervous of strangers. Um, very nervous of other animals and I suspect that she was always caged before because she's really not used to uh, any outside disturbances or things but it's so great to see how far she's come dari awalnya datang yang bener-bener di bawah meja terus nggak keluar-keluar step keduanya dia keluar cuma di kamar doang step ketiga sekarang udah all over the house so it's such a beautiful thing to see that just with a little love with a little care and effort, you could really change a dog's life and um, really help them move on from their traumatic past. So, adoption. Uh, arti adopsi itu, unfortunately, aku lihat di sini agak blurred ya. Soalnya adopsi itu, um, the classic sense of the world, word kalau di segi animals, itu hewan-hewan uh, yang biasanya di shelter, yang ditelatarkan, who needs homes, who need loving homes, and they're being given up for adoption. Sayangnya banyak sekali uh, apa ya, ada breeder-breeder atau pet shop yang anjingnya dijual, yang itu di breeding um, bisa di puppy mills atau dari breeder dan itu pun dipakai kata-kata adopsi, adoptable. Padahal itu bukan adopt, itu dijual. So, want to make that distinction very clear. Kalau jualan anjing dari breeder atau dari pet shop itu bukan Adopsi. adopsi itu adalah adopt anjing either from the streets or from a shelter uh, near you and um, yeah so that distinction is very important and the second part is when you adopt a dog or a cat it's very important to understand that it's a long-term commitment it's not a phase or a trend or a just just um, something that's uh, short term you have to understand that these animals will be a part of your family. So don't adopt just to have a dog, you know, to look cool or something, or because it's trendy, everyone else has pets. You really have to be a responsible owner and understand that there are costs that are involved with owning a pet. You have to be responsible for their vaccinations, for their food, for their grooming, for the care. And um, having said that, it's really not as, as much as, as people think. You could spend as much or as little as you want. I know people who spend a fortune on grooming, but personally I wash all my dogs at home, so it really just depends on, on what your budget and what you can afford. But again, it's very important to be responsible, understand that it's a long-term commitment. If you're not sure what you'll be doing in the next two, three years and you don't know um, 
nasibnya ini anjing akan gimana mending jangan karena sayang sekali sering uh, di Jakarta or everywhere actually ada keluarga yang adopsi anjing um, expats juga banyak sekali kasusnya anjing-anjingku ada beberapa yang rehome dari expat tiba-tiba pindah terus anjingnya nggak mau dibawa ke negara asalnya mereka so that really upsets me because kalau memang tahu seperti itu why adopt in the first place you know it's very stressful for the animal to have to keep moving homes Uh, yeah, so be a responsible owner, um, know what your limits are in terms of space, in terms of budget, uh, that way you can sort of assess what size animal you, you can get to, and make sure you live in an area where they're okay with having animals. Kita kalau lewatin pet shop, liatnya just the cuteness overload. Kita cuma liat puppies di jendela, you know, they're all really, really cute, they're tiny, and uh, sometimes we feel bad, we want to give them homes, and people end up ultimately buying them, um, either because it's cuter than a puppy, and because there's a thing called ras, and <laughs> unfortunately a lot of people just want purebred dogs. Uh, but the thing about purebred actually is that they have very much more health complications than mixed breed or, uh, or uh, mongrel dogs. And that is because, just like humans, if you mix the gene pool too closely together, we have many health complications, and that's the same with dogs. So actually, street dogs, anjing kampung, it's much, much sturdier than anjing ras. And I experienced this myself because I have both. Um, so that's that's also a plus point of not having anjing ras. The second part is, kalau lihat di pet shop lucu segala macamnya, you have to see behind where those puppies come from. Unfortunately, we have these things called puppy mills and they're basically puppy factories. So they don't care about the health of the uh, they don't care about the health of the mom dog or the dad dog. This is I think is she adoptable? Hi. Yeah. She's adoptable. She's very of course. friendly, very soft. Yes. <laughs> so, anyone watching if you're interested in having a little kitty in your house? <laughs> this guy's a good choice. <laughs> yeah. So coming back to the puppy mills It's really sad. Again, it's basically dog factories. Uh, they're very sick. They don't get breaks in between pregnancies. Basically, a female dog is caged and is forced to be pregnant over and over and over again without getting any breaks and uh, suffers a very bad, painful life and usually a very painful end as well. And uh, if you feel bad for the puppies and you buy one, actually you're just contributing to that business and you're just rolling the cycle over and over. So it's much better to adopt in a lot of ways. It's much more ethical. You're not supporting a very cruel business that are exploiting these dogs for profit. Just check out your local shelter, you know, see see what they have and sort of play around with the dogs. And to me, it's really not about how the dog or cat looks. It's more about, you know, the connection you have because animals, just like humans, they all have different characters. And uh, it's, it's really cool to see. Uh, the different personalities in between the animals. So it's, please, please, instead of buying, go to your local shelter first, see what there is. I'm almost positive, I guarantee you'll fall in love with one of those dogs or cats in the shelter. So yesterday I was lucky enough to be able to help give food to some of the dogs at the Animal Friends Jopia shelter. And uh, one of the dogs really, really caught my heart. <laughs> His name is Doyo and uh, he reminds me a lot of my latest adoptee, Jago. He's very shy, a bit wary, um, but he will approach you eventually. It just takes a little time. And I heard his background story was quite, quite sad actually. So he came from a home where um, they basically had many, many animals, dogs, and uh, they couldn't care for them financially. So they couldn't feed them properly and the dogs ended up being starving and uh, unfortunately one of the dogs got loose and uh, took a neighbor's chicken and they weren't very happy with that so they ultimately killed that dog which I find it's terrible. I mean given the circumstance there's a reason why he had to that chicken. They were literally starving so it was a survival instinct. And uh, all of them came here and I heard also they were isolated from each other and they're not used to human contact so I understand why he would be a bit wary of people 
but just like my dog Jago at home, I'm sure with just a little attention, a little patience, and a lot of love, he will ultimately come out of his shell and be an amazing pet. You can see that. He barks, but you can tell he's not aggressive. He's just unsure. He's just a little nervous. So it just takes a bit more time, a bit more patience. And I think it's also important to note that in shelters, try to not always just go for the, the easy, adoptable ones, you know, the happy-go-luckies, the puppies. They're very, they're not very easy, but more easily adoptable than the harder cases. But adopting a, a special case dog is very rewarding to see at the end um, how far they've come. And yeah, it really doesn't take too long. So uh, I highly encourage people to give them a chance. Maybe if you don't want to adopt them immediately, come to the shelter more often and spend more time with that one particular dog. And uh, I'm sure after a while, he'll let you get closer to you and then yeah, you'll see the fall in love and see how amazing uh, Doyok really is. Mm -hmm.